Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Happy Monday. Uh, hopefully you had a relaxing weekend. Uh, today I'm joined with the lovely Diane Diaz. Hello, Diane. Hello, Amber. How are you? Good. Good. Um, I've been saying it's so fun because on one hand, it, this forces me, well, not forces, but allows <laughs> me to connect to people in yes. like an organized way. So I already, I'm like, oh, I already get to see somebody outside. Oh, <laughs> Yay, I'm, another I human. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh, adults. I <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, oops, I forgot to shut a program. That's, we learn this stuff. Okay? Yes, that's okay. <laughs> on the fly is the best way. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so today we're going to talk about something that I've been hearing a lot from people. And I feel like I know a lot of people who are in this situation about mm -hmm. people who are sheltering from home alone. And, home alone. <laughs> yes, exactly. Home alone. And I think there, I've been hearing there's some benefits, of course, mm -hmm. but I think there are also innately some challenges. Sure. I'm sure you know, we're entering into week two or three for a lot of people, depending on when they started. Mm -hmm. And so I think people are probably feeling it. So I'm excited for us to kind of talk about yeah. how do you stay sane when you're home alone? Oh, did, did you think I was sane? I think, <laughs> <laughs> oopsie. I'm giving you so much credit. Uh, okay. <laughs> so why don't you uh, for, first briefly introduce yourself and then we'll yeah. kind of get into, you know, our strategies. Okay. So I'm Diane Diaz, as you said, and I am a speaking coach with Speaking Your Brand. And I also teach at a university. I teach um, branding and marketing classes online, fortunately, at a university. So I have two jobs. Um, but I've been in branding, marketing, and all of that for a very long time. So, and I as a kind of an introduction to why you've asked me to talk about this, I do live alone. Although I'm in a relationship, it just so happens that we don't live together, but also my boyfriend's daughter came back from Europe beginning of March, I think March 10th, and they were already having, in Europe, they were already having some of these cases. And so when she came here, because he, they, she lives with him, I said, well, I'll see you in 14 days, <laughs> thinking that it would only be 14 days and now, here we are because he also teaches at a, another university where they have had some confirmed cases. So he hasn't been around those people, but he's been around people that have been around those people. So it's sort of multiplied. And, and now the county I live in is on a shelter in place order, even though his county isn't. So now I literally can't leave. So <laughs> here I am. Yeah. And, and I think that's, I think that's a place that a lot of people are finding themselves in is mm -hmm. they may, they may have thought like, Oh, okay. This is only going to be for this period of time yeah. or, you know, this is what I'll do. And then all, and then they're slowly realizing like, oh, wow, actually there's, you know, it just keeps extending. And so that yes. also can be really hard. I yes. think it's the unknown. We don't know for sure, for sure how long this is going to be. And so, you know, so it's good, I think, to, to kind of prepare yourself for the worst and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, I think that we, I agree, we have to sort of prepare for the worst. And I think too, you kind of just have to let yourself be whatever way you are. I'm not a big fan of, of forcing myself to feel a certain way about it because yeah, I mean, yes, I'm mostly a positive person, but I'm not positive all the time. And sometimes I just feel like terrible about it and I feel upset or whatever. And I, I try to give myself grace. I would say my overall tip is to just be it's okay to feel however you're feeling. If yes. there are days, and I'm a healthy eater, but there are days, fortunately, I had the presence of mind to buy some junk food when I was stocking up <laughs> because I knew that the, I knew myself and I knew there would be days when I just wanted to wallow in it. Yesterday, I did nothing. I literally laid on the couch, I watched Hulu, and I ate junk food. And it's okay. It's okay right. to do that, right? You know, and the therapist in me fully supports that, that we can't make ourselves feel yeah. a certain way. Now, there are trips for, there are trips, there are tricks. For, oh, there's no trips. I'm sorry. No <laughs> Actually, that was a lie. Sorry. That was very Freudian. Oopsie. <laughs> I know. My trip just got canceled. Yesterday oh, no. <laughs> that was very Freudian. Um, yeah. Yeah, there are tips for mate for helping yourself feel better. And that's, yes. you know, we are going to touch on that. And that yes. is something also tomorrow I'm going to be talking specifically about the mental health side mm -hmm. and things you can do for yourself as well, in addition to what we talk about today. But, yeah. but I, I love the idea of being just kind with yourself mm -hmm. and 
and just allowing to be what you're feeling, you know, allow to be where you're at and you have to do that. And frankly, I personally too have been doing that. Like Sunday, I was like, I am never going to expect anything of myself on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And even though I did prepare food, I did eat junk food and I pretty much watched movies all day too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's, and you know, it actually felt good. And I, once I was done with that, once I woke up this morning, I was ready to get back to it and it's a weekday. And so I'm able to just, you know, jump into the, the work day. I do have work to do. So, you know, I feel I'm not mad about the fact I didn't do anything yesterday. (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) Yes. You got to give yourself that. Yeah. And yeah. So I think, um, my brain totally got sidetracked, but oh, I was, I know when you mentioned the <laughs> junk food thing, Yes, I, I initially, right as this was starting to happen and we went shopping and got a bunch of stuff and, you know, cause they, they were suggesting before any of the shelter in place stuff, like, uh, to prepare for like two weeks at a time mm-hmm. so that we can limit how much we're going out. Yeah. And then a few days later it started getting like, you know, heavier and heavier. And I said, I posted a thing where I had all this junk food because I went and bought a bunch. And I said, <laughs> yeah, my best self went shopping on like Sunday. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> and then, yeah. I And we literally like, I didn't buy alcohol. I didn't buy right. junk. And I was like, what was I thinking? Who am I? I What's going on? Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So I love that you had the presence of mind to do that. That was really yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I am a, I do eat healthy. I work out regularly and it's, that does not to say that I never eat junk. I do occasionally splurge, but I said, you know what? I'm going to probably be, there's probably going to be a point where they're telling us not to leave. I just kind of, you know, cause I look at data and science and I'm like, mm, I see it kind of see it coming. So let me just prepare. And then if I have it, you know, ironically in Florida, that would come in for handy for a hurricane. So I figured <laughs> If yeah. I buy junk food, I'll just be ready for hurricane season. They're all I'll, that'll be fine. So I did buy chips and giant chocolate bars. I've already burned through two ch- giant chocolate bars, so I have to be honest about that. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I know my husband said do, we don't usually buy Oreos or anything like that because I bought those too. I never buy those. <laughs> I nev- we never buy them. They have high fructose corn syrup, and so I'm mm-hmm. like really against them. But we, ha- I have now purchased two packages. My husband's like, can you please stop buying those? Because they're his weakness. Like, And I didn't I know. know all this time. And he's like, this is not good. All my f- all my grocery purchases have gone into their own private quarantine area. Yeah. So I've, st- I've just left them there. I'm pretending like they're not there. And that way, if I get a hankering, I'll be like, oh, that's right. I've got Oreos. Oh, that's so funny. Keep them hidden from myself. So, so yeah, if you were you know, to give a suggestion, obviously Mm -hmm. I love that first tip about just being kind with yourself and having grace because yeah, we're going to have days that are days where we feel a little more optimistic or a little bit better. And then we're going to have those rough days. Um, I know that also we have to recognize that even if you're not consciously feeling stressed about what's going on, this, this is very traumatic. And so it's upending everything. And, and maybe you're one of those people who's fortunate that your, your work either was online or you were able to transition and there's no jeopardy of losing pay. And you have a safe home environment Mm -hmm. that you're in, you know, if you're in that position, that's wonderful, but that doesn't mean that you're not feeling all of this vicarious trauma and it's, and it's 24 seven, right? So oh my if gosh, if you're exposing mm-hmm. yourself at all to anything beyond Hulu or Netflix, <laughs> then you're going to be seen everywhere. Mm-hmm. And so when we're in that trauma response to remember that we're going to be extra tired, we're going to have days where we're extra tender. Mm-hmm. And so we just have to have a little, a lot of kindness for ourselves. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, we're going to talk about what are the things you should do, but I do think that it's great to start with that, to remember Unless you, unless you're just having one of those days where you're not feeling it and you just got to take care of yourself and do what what feels best. Mm -hmm. So on the other tips, what are, what are some things that are kind of working for you as far as, you know, staying somewhat sane, as you said, not fully sane. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I was sane to begin with, but (laughs) then you add this on top of it and it's really, um, it is very challenging, but I, I would say that overall, my main thing is that I, I'm. I've already been a very routine driven person. I like routines because I did have a childhood of trauma and domestic violence. And I think the routine gives me, it makes me feel safe. And especially during times like this, when you, when one can feel very unsafe, even though, I mean, realistically, I am safe from the standpoint that I am in my own apartment. Nobody's coming or going. It's only me. I'm the chances of me getting the virus are pretty slim. If I, as long as I stay put, 
Um, but I think the routine helps me to feel mentally safe, right? So that I'm not, so that I'm not like a, a sort of giving in to any information that comes my way or anything that can make me feel extra, like you said, extra sensitive or ent- extra burdened by it. Because there, there is a lot of information coming at me, but the routine that I've developed of basically going to bed at the same time, basically getting up at the same time, you know, working out daily that I, the way that I do, generally eating well, aside from the occasional splurge, but that routine and having those little habits gives me a sense of comfort. That's at least something is the same for me, right? I I can't, I can't leave my apartment and go see friends or I can't leave and just, I can't go to the beach. You know, it's, already in the nineties here, I would ordinarily go paddle boarding or go to the beach with my boyfriend and I can't do any of that, but, and I can't control that. There's nothing I can do about it. But what I can control is getting up every morning, working out, eating healthy, right? Having my coffee that I like and all of those things. So I I like the routine. Yeah. And, and frankly, as human beings, we crave routine, even Mm if we're the kind of person who's you know, like, uh, I have ADHD. And so like, we tend to rail against structure a lot, but we absolutely need it. It is a comfort and safety for us. You know, they say like children need routine because it does provide that structure and emotional safety. It's, it's not something like consciously we're aware that we need, right. but it's like, that doesn't change with getting older. It's just mm-hmm. that sometimes we're like, Oh, I don't want to. And I just want to, you know, fly by the seat of my pants, which is great because we do need novelty. We need to change it up. Sure. You know? But in times like this, where so much is changing. Mm-hmm. Having that routine is actually really helpful and healthy. Mm-hmm. And so I think that maybe people underestimate that. And I think the first couple of weeks, there was so much flux. And so again, yes. like if you didn't do that, like that's okay. I know I, I keep saying like, all of a sudden it was like, I came home from a conference and then I decided to self, you know, quarantine or whatever you want to call it, just in mm-hmm. case, because I'd been traveling yeah. from Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and also daylight savings time. And I was like, somehow I ended up back on East or West Coast time. I'm like, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> just this last week. But I noticed like it disrupted my sleep. And for yes. me, like sleep is like a linchpin habit of mm-hmm. when I get good sleep, I make so much better choices throughout the day. Yes. And so I, it's like one of those things where, I realized like I need to get back on my East coast time because Mm -hmm. this, we do need that, that structure. It helps our bodies. It helps us regulate because so many other things are not normal right now. Absolutely. As much normalcy as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, for years and years and years, I mean, I don't even know how many I have every morning when I get up, I make my bed. I've just always done it. And it is, even if that is the only thing I accomplished that day, it's a routine and something has gotten done. And then when I walk into my bedroom for any reason, it's orderly and I feel safe because of that. And yeah, see, I, when I, I love that so much because I think that that's the other way to look at it as we probably have morning routines Mm -hmm. and for a lot of us, right. Who like we have our morning routine, we probably then go to work and then we have our evening routine. Um, and that, you know, might look different based on when you're working, but we, we kind of do have those. And I like still thinking about things like that. Now, maybe it's changed a little. Cause like, I know for us, like our old routine was, you know, get up in the morning, drop the kids off at school, go to the gym, come home, have breakfast, and then kind of start our day. Like mm-hmm. that was our routine. Well, we can't do that right now. Right. And frankly, like I, I'm not, I don't love waking up early anyway. And like I said, I've been <laughs> West Coast time, but we are able to push it back because yeah. we don't have to be at school. So we did set up a new routine for that. Mm-hmm. But I think when you're alone, it can be easy to be like, oh, you know, I can just, you know, I'll just kind of do what I feel like doing. Yes. But, but I think that like you're saying, the routine is actually even more important. I agree because you don't, you don't have someone there, someone else there to kind of bounce off how you're feeling or to play off of, you know, if you're down, maybe they're up and that helps you or they can give you a word of encouragement is there's nobody here, right? So it's just, I, I kind of have to find the things that help me just kind of self, self-regulate and self-soothe, right? Yeah. And like you're saying, I know for me, there would be days where I'm like, yeah, I'm not feeling the gym, but because mm-hmm. my partner and I are going, right. like I'll go. So I 
so he's been getting up and going on walks, which I could join, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I did actually yesterday say like, where, how far are you going? And it was really far. I was like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's the thing you have to have that self-reliance. And, mm -hmm. and so that part I think is a little bit harder, but I think when you uh, just kind of make it a non-negotiable right? and I would advocate to people, if you didn't have a routine, like start small because oh, yeah. you don't want to already so many things have changed. So, um, but do start small. Like, even if like, I would say, even if you were going to work out every morning and you can't leave your house now, like where we are, where it's, we're there, we're asked to shelter in place, but we can go outside and walk around and we mm -hmm. live in a place where it's pretty sparse. So, mm -hmm. um, so I could go and do like a quick walk, like around the block. Right. And, right. And then still, so I'm still having that workout part of my routine. Right. But it looks different. Right. Right. Exactly. Kind of, like kind of twisting that. So I know you said like you're a huge workout fan fanatic. Uh, yeah. I do love it. You, your posts inspire me when I, oh, like, <laughs> thank you. gosh, yeah, choose the active thing, you know, but what are you doing then for the, for the exercise part? Well, so I haven't gone to a gym in several years. I, I used to do triathlons, which obviously required a lot of distance training. So a lot of swimming. So I would go to the gym for swimming and then I would do outdoor bike rides with groups and, you know, long runs and all that stuff. And I gave it up several years ago more than several years ago because it's just became too hard as I'm getting older. And I took up strength training and just started, I can't even remember how I started working out from home to different workout videos that I find online. And I bought myself a set of adjustable dumbbells where it's just two dumbbells, but you put pins in and they have the different weights. Yeah. And so I started doing um, these home workouts and I love them. And I, because of my, I think because I was already in the habit of working out regularly because of training for triathlons, which requires scheduling. Yeah. Now it's not so much scheduling as it's just a habit, right? So I'm able, I do get up early every morning. I'm up usually no later than five. And I'm usually working out by six o'clock at the latest. And I usually do some kind of a strength workout. And then I take my road bike. I don't ride outside anymore. I can't now anyway, but um, I put it on a, a thing that makes it into a stationary bike. And then I just have my computer in front of me and watch, you know, something maybe on Hulu or some kind of online course. So I'm still doing at home workouts. I just, again, I've made it a routine and a habit. And I honestly, I don't feel right if I don't do something. Mm -hmm. So even if it's just that I do a 30 minute, you know, home workout, it's something. So it makes me feel like my day has been kicked off, right? Like I'm ready to start. And, and that's great. And I think like you were saying, there's also that building of momentum. So even the small things such as making your bed, which mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of, like I, you know, I feel like there's so little, like it feels like there's, you know, so little anyway, normally that I can keep clean. Yes. I have people in my house. Yeah. But that is the one thing that is so great. I can remember like being when I lived alone, like how perfectly clean everything stays. Yes. I, I do. That. I'm not going to lie. I do love that because oh <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a neat freak. Yeah, yeah. Me too. And I'm like, so I learned like having, yeah, my bedroom, my purse and my car clean gives me such peace because yes. it's like these little things and it does, it makes you feel better. So you get yeah. the win with the the bed and then, and then you do the workout. And so it's mm -hmm. already like, you know, you're, you feel like you're achieving something. And so that right. feels good. And then, yeah. And then you've got the boost of energy. Mm -hmm. Melissa just said there are so many workout options at home at home oh now. And there are, even there our are. gym is streaming. Live yes. Live. Yes. A lot of gyms are. Love. I know there's so many options. And I actually thought I'm going to go through and like choose a bunch of different ones to give to PR to like share with people because I think it's so great. It's such an awesome time to like, you know, you could do yoga. So if you want to work just more in stretching and kind yes. of, and also it's very meditative, which is, yes, which oh, that yeah. you need meditative. that now. Yeah. And and then like, you know, like I have a Peloton that I'm not writing. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. Actually, I have the Peloton app as well. Um, but I know Melissa is also a huge fan. She was so good, just like you, of being able to do her workouts from home. I always mm -hmm. find that so impressive. It is harder for me as like, I love 
And I think it's the extrovert thing. I love going to yeah. the gym because it's, it's, I'm out of my space Yes, and it just makes me feel like I'm there. So now that's where I'm like, okay, now how do I adjust to being at home? Yeah. And I'm used to, I love being able to be in that that set space to like, this is where we work out. Yeah. And so just to start small, like, so today I actually said, okay, I'm going on a walk and I did do the walk Good. and I do feel better. And frankly, my body hates me right now because it's like three weeks of too much sitting in a chair because yeah. we're probably all sitting and doing more work or online mm -hmm. and not doing the workouts. And right. also I miss my acupuncturist and my chiropractor so much. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. It's so, it's so sad to think about too, all the people that we see, you know, and those are relationships, even though they're service providers, they are relationships. I miss my hairdresser. Well, oh, no. I miss my hairdresser, <laughs> but I put, I put this wonderful powder to cover my gray, but, um, <laughs> I miss her and just chatting with her too, you know, so yeah. those things are gone. And so I think when those things are gone, I do feel that it's important to, as much as you are in control of, if you can take control of it, that does give you a sense of control. Not that everything has to be controlled, but it just does give you at least a couple of things that you feel like you're in control of when everything feels so out of control. Yeah. And it is comforting. And, and, yeah. this, and this is not fully on a conscious level. So I know I've, said that before, but it really is on a subconscious level when we feel there's like some safety there. And, and we're not talking about rigidity, but we're talking about, let me focus on the things that I can do and that I have control over because mm -hmm. it does bring you a sense of calm. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's a good thing. So as far as like meals, are you sticking to like meal times? Is that part of your routine? Yeah, I try to do that because I... I don't do well if I eat too late into the evening and you're going to laugh when I tell you what too late is, but I usually eat my dinner by, <laughs> don't laugh at me, <laughs> by no later than 4 p.m. Because so impressed. <laughs> I go to bed, I try to go to bed no later than 9. I really try to go to bed by 8.30, but if I'm going to bed at 8.30 and I've eaten at 6, I don't sleep because my food is digesting and I feel amped up and I can't my heart rate's elevated. I can't sleep. So I do much better if I, but again, I'm getting up early too. So I'm eating breakfast very early. Um, so it's all, it all kind of follows from there, but I try to, I try to keep very regular meals and I, tr I have, because I had a bunch of fresh foods, I didn't want to go bad. I cooked them all. Yeah, I portioned them out. I put them in the freezer. So at least I can just, again, doesn't mean I'm not going to eat junk from time to time because I am, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> But I've got basically healthy meals ready to go. So I do try to stick to regular meal times. And again, I'm very, I'm very routine driven in that way. I like it. No, and I, you know, I know I love to laugh, but no, it's, it's actually really smart. And like you said, when you think about when you're getting up, uh, I actually follow uh, this woman, Kate Stillman from yogahealer.com. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she, one of her main habits, there's these habits about body thrive and being, kind of optimal in our routines and our body and our schedule. And one of them is the earlier, lighter dinner. And yes. so that's something too, I've noticed that we were, you know, this was supposed to be ironically the year of health for my husband and I, but <laughs> so we were really, well, and welcome to 2020. <laughs> I know. And then I was like, 2020 is like, you know, like, <laughs> fuck it. Um, it still can be, I just got a yeah. little derailed, but mm -hmm. that was one of the habits was trying to eat earlier and all, yeah. and we're kind of like slowly in, you know, inking back, but we're trying to get to that point where it's like by six o'clock, like the kitchen is closed. I will tell you that's not happening. Like we're that's... finishing our meal and I have been snacking, but ironically, I actually have lost three pounds. Cause I think we're not eating out as much. And oh, yeah. I think that, you know, and I purposely do not buy the snacks that I love. Right, right. I was even at the store because I went for, our, I was like, okay, I'm sensing like this uptick. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go do another run. And so we're probably good for like two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to the store and I was like, yeah, I'm not getting, you know, you no know, ruffle potato chips with like French onion dip because I, I I will just obsessively think about it and then there was certain other there was a, something else I saw and I was like dude no I can't I cannot be trusted with that in the house like, same same I even bought peanut butter which I can't be trusted with but I've uh, I'm eating it I'm like I don't you know what am I gonna do what am I gonna do it's 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 um it's you know it's, 
crazy times and I got to do what I got to do. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But I do like the idea of even that, even thinking like, okay, do, can I give myself a cutoff time? So mm -hmm. that way I'm just not mindlessly grazing. And right. that it's again, this is all stuff that helps your mood and your mental health. And mm -hmm. so these are all things that I think are really beneficial. Um, I'm trying to think of, yeah. So like a little bit of having that morning routine, like what, yes. is, what are the things that kind of get you started in the morning that set you up for success? Mm -hmm. And, you know, for people who aren't going to work for one reason or another, I think the routine is even more important. Oh yeah. You, you know, that's a lot of free time and it can be really, it can become really depressing and boring. Yes. Fast. So, you know, those who are fortunate enough to keep working, I know it's still a stressor for people, mm -hmm. but at least it gives you something to focus on. Right. Um, but I do, I like saying routines versus schedules, even though sometimes like generally, you know, like, okay, we're going to eat at noonish or whatever. Right. But having routines, because there's a, it, we think of it as a little more flexible. So you're mm -hmm. still having a structure which is really important. And that's what we're talking about, but you're also giving yourself a little flexibility and not yes. being rigid because yes. that goes back to the kindness thing. Yes. It's, you know, sometimes you're just going to be like, oh yeah, I was going to keep working. And, and granted, you know, if you have a deadline, you have to, but you can be like, I, I'm, I cannot, I'm not, I'm not able to focus right now. I'm not in the mood. Mm -hmm. I need to do something different to kind of break it up. Right. Right. So I like that. Um, how about, uh, <clears throat> I guess if we're talking about, do you have an evening routine, like specific mm -hmm. things that you do to unwind? Yeah, I usually like to, again, I'm a kind of a neat freak, so I like to make sure all the dishes are clean. And because it's just me, I don't even use the dishwasher. So I just wash all the dishes, you know, clean out the sink. I like, I like for the kitchen to be nice and tidy. So that when I get up in the morning, I don't feel like chaos when I walk in there, right? And then, I, again, I... I don't know, like I'm very, very routine driven. And so I'll, <laughs> I'll, before I even brush my teeth or do like, I, I like to have tea in the evening, this sleep, sleepy time tea. Before I do that, as if I'm in a hotel, I go into my bedroom, I turn down the bed, I get the bed all ready for me to get in it. Cause I've got that. a, got a bunch of pillows on it. So my boyfriend likes to say I have a part-time job of removing the pillows from my bed because yes. I have so many pillows. <laughs> so I, I like to not alone in that. <laughs> I love the pillows. I take all those off, get it all ready for me to just, once I sit on the sofa, drink my tea, I've brushed my teeth. I start to feel sleepy. All I have to do is literally walk in there and get in bed. So, so I do that and then I get my tea, I drink my tea, I watch, I try to watch things, especially in the evening, but particularly during this, nothing that's very stimulating. It has to be completely mindless. So literally things like cupcake wars on Hulu or baking show, things that don't require much thought on my part and that aren't stress inducing any, anything that is, for instance, I love the show. This is us, but I've given it up for now because it's too emotional. And I can't, I'm an empath as well. And I, whatever's happening to everyone else feels like it's happening to me. Yes. So I've stopped watching any of the news. I don't, I just don't watch the news. I figure if it's important enough, I'm going to see it somewhere, right? Yes. That's good enough for me. I don't watch the news. I don't watch any of the presidential briefings, none of them. <laughs> and I don't watch um, anything that I, even that I've already been enjoying, but that is too emotional because I can't take it on. It's too, it's too much coming into my filter of empathy that I can't, you know, process. So I don't, and especially before bed, I don't watch those things, especially because they just rile me up. It gets my brain working. So then I have my tea, sit on the sofa, watch whatever is mindless. Then I brush my teeth. When I go to bed, I like to read again, whatever I read has to just be right now I'm reading City of Girls. So it's a lovely novel. It's got nothing is um, stress inducing. There's nothing. It's not anything. It's not a business book that requires you to think about anything. Yeah. So it has to be something like that where I can, and I, I've got it on a Kindle paper white. So I'm reading, 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 sleepy, 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 close the Kindle white, lay it on the pillow next to me and I'm out. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's how I roll at night. night. It's so good. First off, I want you to stop being embarrassed about your routines because they're awesome. <laughs> I, sometimes I, I feel like I'm like so rigid and checking it off the list. Oh, no, know? no, I, no. Cause again, it's like these things that you, you very, you're very self-aware. So it's these things you've realized that you need to do for yourself as a therapist. I would love for my clients to be having routines <laughs> like that because I know how helpful and calming they are. They and are. It's the same thing of like preparing your body, telling your body, 
yes. we're getting ready for bed now. And mm-hmm. I, I really do advocate um, the one about really being aware of the exposure, even if you're not a very sensitive person, but I agree, I too, very empathic and sensitive. And so I have to be really thoughtful about that. And, and then sometimes it's like, you don't know until you know, like, mm-hmm. um, there's like, I love movies and I've been doing a bunch of whole old movies at night, you know, it's just like, like either family time or by myself right. or, um, but I started to watch Cinderella man. Cause I love sports movies and oh, I love, huh? I just love uplifting stories. And I love that story started to watch it. And I was like way too close to home. And even though I know it's different now, Mm -hmm. it felt too real. And I was like, I cannot do this. So I had to switch to something else. And so I I do think it's really important for people. And like you're saying, being mindful of how much exposure we're having to the media and to news. And I, I really try not to look at anything at night either. I'm, if Mm -hmm. I'm searching out something or I'm going to do my, you know, uh, like, COVID update of the day. And I don't even know if I'm doing it every day. Yeah. I'm going to do it in the morning because yes. it's too much at night. And you don't know when I'm scrolling through Facebook, I could, I come across things randomly and, it, yes. and you can feel so like anxious and triggered. And so yes. I'm even limiting that. Mm-hmm. Um, me too. And which, you know, it bums me out because I like being on it, but I was like, I can't like after a certain point in the too evening, much. The, the risk is too high, right? So yes. I personally have been rewatching like all the Real Housewives. <laughs> so I, I know I I'm went through about with New York. <laughs> I went through Hulu and Netflix and just marked and put, you know, you could put things on your list to watch later. Yes, yes. So I just, I went through and found all the things that are enjoyable, not stressful, things I've been wanting to watch, movies I've been wanting to watch. And I just marked them all so that I'm not tempted to go watch things that are stressful. And I just know I have a go-to list to choose from that I can just, I even pulled out, I have a whole uh, box set of all the, uh, all of the episodes of Friends see, uh, DVDs. Yes, I yes. pull those out just to have them on standby in case I need something. Cause you don't have to think they're funny. They make you laugh. They're, they're friends. I don't, yeah. right now, I don't have any friends around me. So I figured, figured TV friends is good enough, right? Absolutely. And I think, yeah, checking in about what is it that you're needing right now? Because mm-hmm. like, like you're saying, I'm being really mm-hmm. conscious about what I'm taking in, uh, not just with the media and with social media, but also like the movies or shows or books everything. or everything. Yeah. And there were like on Friday night, I, I went through a couple of different things because it was like, no, no, no. Like my energy's not mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Um, I, I the ended up thing. landing on, uh, I will say it was fantastic. I watched the whole like series, the first season, it was only four episodes, but, uh, self-made on Netflix. Oh, I've seen that. I've been wanting to check oh my that gosh, out. It was so good. And it was yeah. like, for me, like definitely tears, but it was like a good cathartic cry. Like, yeah, not, not a depressing not upsetting. cry. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's stuff in there where you're like, wow, just like hardship she faced. And yeah, um, but it's a great story. And I think also like it's perspective of Mm -hmm. people have been through a lot worse. (laughs) So so I'm not trying to say like judging, like never to feel bad. But sometimes for me having perspective of I'm really lucky right now. Yes. Like there's a lot of good stuff. And so that's the kind of stuff too, where it's like, you just got to figure out like, what are you feeling? Sometimes you need that mindless stuff and sometimes you're going to be craving something else. And absolutely. Go with that. Um, yeah, I, I really, really like that. I like, and that's part of self-care. And I know like <laughs> yeah. lately everyone hates like, Oh, self-cares, whatever. Like the, it feels like people are getting so upset by it. I'm like, but as a concept, I think they're misinterpreting what self-care is. And part of it is how do you take care of yourself so that you, you know, are feeling good and, you know, there's, you kind of feeling optimal. And some of that mm-hmm. is, you know, being aware of what you're exposing yourself to. Yes. There's the, there's the nice stuff of like massages yeah. bubble bath. bath or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Or like candles. I was going to sure. say, I'm doing every, like, I can't think of it. <laughs> I'm doing every little thing. Cause I know like stress. Yeah. It's like, it's like, here's the threshold of stress and we've gone over and we're anxious or we're feeling upset it's like every little thing that you can do to kind of lower your stress, these little steps. And it's like, do I think lighting a candle is going to change my life right now? No, but it smells good. And so yes. like, and a lot of our emotions are connected to smell. And so being aware, like having a peaceful environment, like, you know, putting on stuff that makes us feel calm, whether mm-hmm. that's music or 
or meditating, you know, it's all these little, what are all the things we can do? Absolutely. What are are the other things that you do for your self-care? Um, you know, it's so funny that you mentioned things that smell good because I, I've been on this kick for just, I'm 53 and so all my hormones are changing. So I've been on this kick before all of this of getting rid of body skin products and things that have chemicals in them. And so I had been using this body lotion from Whole Foods that has zero fragrance, whatever. And I love it, but I found, I was like going through and kind of inventorying what I have. Do I need to get more of shampoo or whatever? And I found this bottle of this body collagen lotion that I used to use. It's a full bottle and it smells beautiful. I'm sure it's all artificial chemicals, but I thought, you know what? I don't care right now. I'm using it because I want to smell something that, so I put it on after my shower. I was like, oh, this smells so good. It made me feel so I don't know, just like uplifted. And I didn't even, I don't even care what chemicals are in there. I just want to feel good, you know? And that's the flexible mindset. That's right. right. That's yes. the understanding of we're doing our best. And it's like, this goes back to eating or anything. It's like, if you're 90% on track, you're right. doing really, really well. Exactly. Putting putting that lotion on one time is not going to kill me. It'll be fine. No, you will yeah. be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. Even through this whole two months or whatever it is. Yeah, that's up, right. You know? So yeah, I, I do think, uh, yeah, that's, I love that one. Um, something else. So I know we talked about like kind of limiting what we're exposing ourselves mm-hmm. to and diet and exercise. And, and like, we're saying these little tiny things of self-care, um, is there any other things that are kind of coming up for you that you're thinking? Yeah. You know, I'm also taking normally because I'm usually super, super busy and working, working, working. And then, you know, I do go to the, not now, but I was going to the campus, you know, three days a week the campus where I teach. Obviously, I can't do that now. So I'm at home literally all the time. But I am trying to make more of an effort to spend some time with my cat, because he loves that I'm here. And I do know there's there's scientific research that petting an animal reduces your blood pressure and all those things. So I'm trying to take the opportunity to snuggle with him and or like move. If I'm working, I'll move from the table where I'm sitting right now and just go sit on the sofa with my laptop and let him sit next to me so that I can feel him next to me. And it's just, it is super comforting. I'm so thankful I have a pet because at least because I'm by myself, it's at least another personality that I can interact with and talk to. Yes. I talked to him, but it's Uh, so, it's so comforting. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So it's, so I'm trying to make an extra effort to really be more mindful of paying attention to him, you know, and I will say he picks up on my energy. So when I'm freaked out, he knows it. So I'm trying to be more mindful for him too, you know, to, to give him attention. Yeah, and if you if you are lucky enough to have have an animal at home, I think everybody with an animal knows like how Mm -hmm. like it is very comforting. It's very relaxing, and and just to have that other presence, you know, another strategy if you're you're home alone without an animal, like if you have a weighted blanket, having that because it does give you the sense of. Like, like a hug like, almost. Yeah, exactly. Like there's something there. Yeah. I think the other piece, and this is huge, is you have to stay connected somehow to people. Yes. Like this, right? Exactly. Because even though, you know, like I, I mean, I hear a lot of talk, uh, people will kind of talk about introversion, extroversion in a way that's not accurate. Hmm. And it's like, uh, introverts are not hermits. So right. <laughs> this goes I'm an introvert. Everybody. Yes. And I'm an extrovert. <laughs> right. But it's we still need so we still need people. Yes. We're social beings. Yes, it's how uh, introverts tend to like they 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 just need to be alone to recharge, but they still yes. need to be with people. Correct. And I actually have worked with many introverts who they're like they're one person, you know, their significant other, whoever that person is to them. They they could be with them all the time and be mm-hmm. fine. So it really mm-hmm. depends, right? Sure. But but I think you do need to figure out still ways to connect. And I I think the Ideally, I would say video because it does yes. feel so different when you yes. can see somebody's facial expressions mm-hmm. and you you get more information because ninety I think it's like ninety percent of all communication is nonverbal. Yeah, so ideally it's it's video, but then yes. it's not. I think even phone calls. Sure, and, and then the lower level, which might be with more people, would be the you know texting or messaging mm-hmm. or whatever sure. else. So I think you should do layers because I think that's the one thing I would suggest is like, if people choose one person to connect with, well, if that person's busy or sick or they're having a bad day or whatever, like that's just a lot of pressure. And so I think my recommendation is 
you know, find a couple of people where you're scheduling something around mm-hmm. that connection. Yeah, I agree with that. And I'm fortunate in that I, the work that I do with Speaking Your Brand, I'm working with clients virtually. So I'm seeing clients, you know, through a a format like this on video. And then, for instance, I just had a meeting with Carol, who owns Speaking Your Brand, and she and I met in this format. So I'm, I'm, I've got that advantage that I'm getting to see a lot of people that way, which is nice. But I'm also doing FaceTimes with my boyfriend, FaceTimes with him and his parents and his daughter, um, you know, and some different women's women that I'm connected to in different ways and or in groups with have reached out as, to the group and said, hey, let's do a virtual happy hour or let's do a virtual get together. And we're even trying to arrange one between some of us who teach at, at Full Sail together. And so we're, you know, I'm trying to find all these different ways. So this is, these are different people across different yeah. Um, different friends groups, which is nice. So I'm trying to kind of have that smattering of people that I can connect with on this format. And I agree too, that it's, I do text with a lot of people and, you know, talk to people on the phone, but I like the video because you do get the facial recognition. You get the expressions, you can communicate your emotions a little better. And it's just, it's, I just feel it's more enjoyable, you know, and more like being in person. It is. It's so much more. And yeah, so I've been very conscious as well to, um, like I've scheduled, uh, for my biz bestie, we did a virtual, like, uh, we called it like a coffee, coffee, whatever chat. Yeah. And it was great. Cause we had women from all over the country join <clears throat> and I forgot to take a picture of course, I, I never remember that, but, yeah. um, but it was really nice just to talk. And it wasn't like, we were just chatting. It was just, mm-hmm. it wasn't like structured. And I think yeah. that sometimes structure is good. And sometimes having that where you can just talk. Um, but I also did it with like my family, like my dad and my sister got together and <clears throat> it was a first time for my dad and he's, 60, he's 69 and, um, we ended up doing it on zoom. Uh-huh. Uh, and I remember he was like, it took me forever to download. And we're like, what else do you have to do <laughs> yeah, wait, where, for the day? Where are you going? Yeah. It was so funny. And the great thing is now once it's set up, it's good. Right. Yes. And right. then I organized the same thing with my husband's side of the family so that everybody could kind of meet. So we did that yesterday. Oh, nice. And so we're doing, yeah, more, more like FaceTime right. chats. Like my daughter, is doing virtual play dates with her friends mm-hmm, just yeah. on the iPad. And so I think scheduling those is really important because right. it's great if we can do it impromptu, like, Hey, what you doing? And like, get on. Yeah. Um, but some people are working through the day. So I think, um, scheduling it as well, because I know it can be really easy when you're alone to just be like, Oh, I'll do that. I'll do that. And then right. all of a sudden like, Oh, I'm tired. It's the end of the night. Or I've already taken off my makeup or I already put on my yeah. pajamas. And I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, with friends, I just don't, like, yeah. you're, getting, you're getting the real deal here. Yeah. I mean, you know, I have to put on these new blue block or blue light glasses, yeah, which are yeah. so ugly anyway. I'm like, I hate them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, really making sure that you're structuring that and reaching out, especially when you're alone to make sure, is there somebody you can check in with every day? So that could be that one person, but then making sure you're also sprinkling in other people as well. Yes. Um, my friend, Chris, uh, just like it was too late at night and I was so tired, but, um, he had sent an invite. He was doing like a virtual game night, which I think is so cool. Yeah. And I wish I, I wish I'd had the energy. I saw it as like, I just can't tonight, you know, that's honoring your energy. Right. Sure. But uh, I definitely want to join because how fun, I think that would be so much fun. Yeah, and I that think sounds fun. We can get creative. Like how yes. can we connect with each other? And I, so many of my friends are posting like watch parties and stuff. So I think there's a mm-hmm. lot of opportunity, but I, but I would say, cause I, I guess I, I think about the clients that I have or people that have, mm-hmm. that talk to me where they even friends where they're like, they don't want to be the one to reach out. Mm. And I always say to them, like, you, you have to ask for what you need yes. because you can't one, you can't put it on. This was with a friend who's a, a extreme introvert. I said, you cannot put all the pressure on the extroverts. Cause sometimes we're just like, busy and we're not thinking, Mm -hmm. but we would love an invite too. So so I think it's really important though, like, especially now, because that could easily lead you down this road of like spiraling and depression. Yes. And it, you know, we all have bad days. So making sure sure you're asking for what you need. And I, I think that goes a long way. And it's, I know it can be, it can be, um, it's making yourself vulnerable, but I mm-hmm. think if you do it individually, it, it feels less vulnerable. 
You know? And I think you'll, if you do it, you'll find that other people are feeling the same way. It's not, you know, and they're maybe they're too afraid to speak up too. And so you're, you're helping yourself, but you're also helping them. I'm, I'm part of a Facebook group for a podcast. I listen to the podcast is called by the book. And it's a podcast where these two women review self-help books. So I've been listening to it for a while. So I joined their Facebook group because I love them. And there was a conversation going on in there that started by somebody about feeling kind of down during this time, whatever. And so I commented back and then I said, Hey, if anybody wants to connect and just DM me, that's fine. Or also if you want to do a virtual happy hour, I'm up for that too. So some, one of the women did reach out to me as a DM in Facebook and I communicated with her for a little while and we helped each other feel a little better. And I don't even know who she is. I mean, I know her name, but I, I never met her. I don't know her, but Hey, you know, listen, we're all in this together. Why not support one another? Exactly. And sometimes we also have to remember that there were already struggles pre all of this. Yeah. So I know I had that happen where I'm connecting with somebody um, for something we're struggling with in our business that w existed before, but now it's like, you almost feel like, okay, I have to deal with this. And yeah. so it might not even be directly related, but it's like, I mm -hmm. still need that support. And I do think reaching out is a really good idea. Mm -hmm. I know for people, sometimes when they post on social media and they don't get a response, it also can be really crushing. So you have yes. to know yourself, but, and remember, like, first of all, the algorithms, most people are right. seeing most things, right? Right. But in addition, it's, um, you know, it, it doesn't, either people aren't seeing it or they happen to be busy that day or that time. So I do think like, be aware of that. If you're, if that's going to crush you, don't do right. that. Reach right. out individually. But yes. I still think posting out like that too. And sometimes people don't know how to help. Mm -hmm. Um, we just had a, I had a Facebook friend who posted that she's home alone. She's, uh, quarantining in place alone and she got, she's sick right now. Oh. And so she reached out for local people, which I think is really smart. Yeah. Um, because that's even harder. It's like, well, mm -hmm. who's, you know, who's checking in on you and, yeah. and who could you get logistical help from, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, when I'm, when I talk to people about, uh, social support networks anyway, we talk about, it's like you have, you know, these outer, outer people, like the bigger network, and then you have your, you know, smaller and smaller inner circle, your mm -hmm. biz bestie or your best friend or whatever right. it is. Um, but I, I do also have this caveat of, I think you have to have those local people as yes. well. You can't like, you have to have the people, well, normally who you can connect with physically in person as well as the people virtually. I think, you yeah. know, I think finding a, a little bit of a balance. Sure. And I guess, depending on where you are, if you are able to leave your house, like I've seen so many people do this where you could go to your friend's house and sit in the driveway yes. and be six feet apart and bring yeah. your own chair. So, right. you know, and still be able to have like in person. So I think there right. are ways to do it. Right, right. You know, that you still can have that face to face contacts mm -hmm. if, if you're able to. I mean, obviously, yes. if you're, right. <laughs> you're on lockdown. And I know, like, uh, my sister talked about her and her neighbors did that where they were over the fence. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. They just had like, they had, they had drinks and they were just mm -hmm. talking and connecting. So they're, I think get creative in how you're staying connected with people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I think this is, this is, uh, you know, if there could be any positives from that, maybe that is one is that we're getting creative in ways to connect and to nurture and help one another. Right. I mean, that's something. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, and challenging it, like, do mm -hmm. I need to, and, and it's okay to say like, okay, I've just had, I have, you know, I have these days too, where yeah. I'm like, I don't want to see people because For I'm sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, oh yeah. But sometimes we can just be in a place where we're feeling bad and not realizing mm -hmm. that's what we need. Mm -hmm. So that goes back to checking in with yourself. Yes. You know? Yeah. Sometimes it's like, uh, we have this acronym in the therapy world. And I think especially in the world of addiction where they say halt, so it's hungry, mm. angry, lonely, tired. So like sometimes we'll make bad choices or or we start to spiral because really we're hungry. So our blood sugar is not stabilized. And, sure. you know, some some of us are, get hangrier than others. Like I am a very hangry person. Me too. <laughs> uh, and then angry, like if we're feeling angry or upset about something, like an interaction we've had with somebody or something that's going on in our lives, like we tend to catastrophize. And sure. so being aware of that. And then the loneliness piece. And this yeah. is why you're feeling really lonely, the antidote is to reach out. Yes. And ideally someone would reach out to you, but that may not happen and not because they don't care, but mm -hmm. because it's just not in their, the you know, it's not in their front of mind either. Right. 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 And they're tired. 
I think yeah. sleeping. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, yeah. You might need to sleep more during yeah. all of this. Yeah, I'm trying to also because I'm a terrible. I've always been a terrible sleeper. I just don't sleep well, and then with throwing hormones to that, and it's just a train wreck. But I'm trying to also let myself take little naps when I want to, and you know, if I'm working on something and I'm feeling drowsy and can't focus because I'm so drowsy, okay, well, then I just go sit on the sofa, lay, lay down, take a quick little 10, 20 minute nap. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And changing it up. That's the yeah. little ways of like staying a little bit, you know, where it doesn't feel so monotonous, like get up. Yeah. Like you said, I love, like, that's why I put a little couch in my office, even though I'm not mm -hmm. seeing people in person here. Mm -hmm. It's like, because I need to sometimes change where I'm sitting or, you know, mm -hmm. just for my body, but also yes. for my mind. Like, yes, just it gives me that, that refresh. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, I love that. Uh, are there any other things I think that, you know, like particular to, to people who are, who are having to do this alone that are kind of come up yes. for you? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I started doing was looking for, you know, there are so many companies offering free online courses of all different types. Like the, I've seen free dance classes, you know, free yoga. Um, there's also, I, I don't know how I stumbled on this, but there is a free class offering through Harvard online for, um, it's called something like understanding Buddhism through its scriptures. And I've always been really interested in Buddhism just to learn about it. So I signed up for it because it's free. Why not? Right. And so yeah. it's just a way to keep my mind occupied in something that I've always wanted to learn about. And even if I don't finish it, who cares? I mean, it's still something to learn about, learn about another, you know, another uh, sort of belief system, uh, different culture and keep my mind occupied. So I think free online classes of any kind are really great. And because of the time that we're in and we're all sort of stuck, what better time to take advantage of that, right? And so many companies offering them for free. I know. And I I I love that. Like thinking about like this is an op there's an upside mm -hmm. to this. There's an opportunity to kind of do some of these things that normally you wouldn't have time for right. because you are you know, spending more time out doing activities mm -hmm. or being in person with people. So, you know, and the nice part for the extroverts is you don't actually feel like you're missing out on anything because nothing's exactly. happening. That's right. <laughs> no <laughs> FOMO. <laughs> yes, exactly. So yeah, thinking about are the things you want to learn about? I love right. that suggestion. I think it's so smart. It keeps your mind active mm -hmm. and, or are there hobbies or things that you've started yeah. or projects you've started and that you could possibly work on here and there when you're feeling it, you know? Yes. I've seen a lot of people and a lot of people that I know are doing things like cleaning out their closets because they haven't had time to do that. And the closets are jam packed or, you know, my boyfriend, for example, is cleaning up his backyard. He's has like overgrown plants and things. So yeah. he's been cleaning that up. And I just think there's a lot of things like around and, and even in an apartment, obviously I'm not going to clean a yard, but I could clean out my closets and clean out my pantry and do things like that, that they've gotten neglected because I've just been so busy. Well, now I've got time. I you know? know. I saw a great meme that said, um, I've been saying for years, I haven't, I don't clean up my house because I don't have time. And, and then it says, turns out that wasn't it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I but I agree. And I'm yeah. a big supporter of making your home environment as, as like calm and peaceful as possible. Me too. And yes. I somebody feel good in their home is different based on the person, mm -hmm. right? Like some yeah. people love all their tchotchkes and their stuff and they feel really mm -hmm. good and other people it's like less is more and you've just got to find your style. But right. I do think it is a great opportunity for kind of tackling some of these things that yeah. we just normally, yeah, we're being pulled in so many directions. So it's like finding the positive in this, the silver yes. lining in it, um, I think can be really helpful for staying in a mindset that it, again, not being positive all the time, but it's about right. making sure you're not falling into this pit of depression or anxiety. Absolutely. Um, so I think that's a great suggestion. I know there were so many things I thought, well, maybe I'll learn how to do a smoky eye mm -hmm. finally. On YouTube. <laughs> like, why not? You know, yeah. like I have all this time. I know. So. I know. Well, and that's another thing is that there are, you know, there's a lot of great content on YouTube and I do so again, I use a lot of online uh, YouTube videos for workouts. And so maybe, you know, if you're looking to get started, just explore some of them and see what suits your fancy. And they're, I mean, they're, they cover all levels, beginner, 
you know, at home workouts with, if you have no equipment, if you do have equipment, how to improvise equipment. I mean, there's everything. So, which is you know, so exciting. I mean, we're very lucky in that we have all that opportunity oh, to kind of learn yeah. these things and, mm -hmm. and have the space for it. I know. Cause I, I did a massive purge and I, I purge a lot though. Cause I, I, am very impacted by like clutter. Me too. Um, I, get, I like to get rid of. Yeah. I just, and so I did that and I got rid of all this stuff and mm -hmm. there's just one room left. It's haunting me. But, <laughs> um, but there was one thing where I had bought this giant frame and I, it was going to, I was going to put together like this collage and it just never happened for my daughter's room. And it never happened, never happened. And so I almost put that in the pile to give away. And then I was like, well, actually, you know, why couldn't I do that? Like why we have time right. now. Like, yeah. We could just dedicate some, you know, some of our time together and, you know, doing that. So I think yeah. that sometimes we just get into, we're so used to being like, oh, I don't have time to do X, you know? Yes. So like, oh, wait a minute. Actually I could do that. You know, yeah, it's funny when the time comes around, we don't even realize that we have it. Right. So exactly. that's a good point. Yeah. And I know there are probably people out there that, and I just kind of want to address, like, if you're feeling a lot of money stress right now, mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to negate that. And definitely, right. you know, I, I, I'll be continuing to talk about that over the next couple yes. of weeks and to address that. But at the same time, worrying about something doesn't actually like you need to take action on it, mm -hmm. but you still, we can, we can fill our day with worry. And so instead of doing that, like figuring out like, okay, you know, there are many techniques, which again, I'll go through on different lives, but, yes. but allowing yourself the space to then enjoy some of the upside of this yes. and, and getting some other stuff. Cause as you do it, you do feel better, even though the reality of, of life is still there. It's just yeah. these small ways to feel better. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you said that because I, not only did I grow up, you know, kind of in childhood trauma, but also not having a lot of money. And so feeling financially secure is also very important for my mental health for me personally. Um, and so, all of this that then caused the like panic of like, oh, what's going to happen, right? And I can very easily, because of all that past stuff, I can very easily go to gloom and doom. And I know that about myself. And so I like to then, I'll let myself wallow in it for a minute, but then I like to make a list of, yeah. well, you know, okay, well, if if everything just goes to hell in a handbasket, what's my plan? And so I'll make a plan like, okay, I've got this, I've got this, I've got the savings over here. Or I've got this credit card. Should I need it? That has X amount of money, a credit limit on it if I'm desperate. Right. So I like to know what my options are. So I literally kind of take an inventory and I did that already. I took an inventory of everything and figured out like, what's my, you know, a plan if something, you know, if things turn really dire and I do have a plan. So just knowing that that, there was a plan of that I could execute makes me feel better. Is would it be ideal and would it be my dream? No, not necessarily. But if everything, you know, is really, really bad, I do have a plan. And just going through that thought process kind of put my mind at ease, you know? Yes. Well, there's a lot to that. One is you feel like you have options, right? Yes. Two is you're yeah, you're you're when you do that process, you start to realize like some of the, again, this yes. goes back to the catastrophizing, like right. some of it is, yes, maybe I wouldn't choose this to get a business loan or right. to use my credit card. <laughs> exactly. Right. But I, I know I have options and I know right. like I'm going to survive this and this isn't going to last forever. No. You know, despite which some people, again, don't read those articles. No. They say they <laughs> and even though it might feel like it right now, we're, we're only at the beginning. Of course it's going to feel that way. Right. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely different and it's a long haul, but yeah. I, I really advocate that. And that's actually, I talked about this in the live that I did about personal finance, where I created this a long time ago. Um, I call it my, um, I call it my shit hits the fan plan. And yes. so I have a whole <laughs> spreadsheet that says yeah. like goes through like every single item of yeah. Like the budget and where it's yes. at. And I think even making small steps towards that. Yes. So I said, I have the shit hits the fan, which we're not there yet. That's, no. you know, over here. And, it, and I'm like, okay, how could we live or, you know, what, how long do we have or kind of knowing that? And then there's the middle ground plan because. Right. Uh, and that's kind of what we started to implement. Mm -hmm. uh, like I cut our grocery budget, you know, right. I, 
I did things to like be proactive because as a business yes. owner, my income isn't uh, a stable thing. Right. Right. And so I think those are, I love that idea. And I think it's really useful for people because we can be like, if it's so diffuse and we have no yes. idea, then it's just this panic and worry in this. And it is very scary then. Yeah. yeah. If we can be like, okay, <laughs> I know actually I have this and then, okay, not ideal, but I, like you're saying, uh, we, we don't, hope you have to use your credit cards, but if you do right. like, okay, I have six months of living on my credit exactly. card. Exactly. Yes. To survive. Yeah. It's just a way of saying, okay, now I can let that go. Mm -hmm. And now I can focus on like, what's helping me right now. What are the upsides of this? That's a good point about that now that I can let it go. Because once I did it, I did feel this enormous weight of just the thought process that was going, the thought that was going towards it. Then I didn't have to focus on it anymore because now I knew. And I did the same thing with an Excel spreadsheet in my budget. Okay. I And I could get rid of this. I could get rid of Hulu. I could get rid of Netflix. I don't want to get rid of Hulu and Netflix. But listen, if it's that and eating, I'm going to get rid of it, right? right? So these are the things I could cut. This is how much I need to live. Okay, I'm good for X amount of time. And like you said, using credit cards, not ideal, but if I have to, I will. Once I did that little process, I'm like, okay, now I can take my brain effort and put it towards something useful instead of worrying about something I can't change. Yeah, exactly. And it, it and action. Action is a you know, a great way to combat anxiety is action. And so yes. part of it is our self-talk and part yeah. of it is taking that action against mm -hmm. it. And so we're like, okay, uh, we're in a place now where like yeah, I, I know that this part's okay. And now I could put my energy here. Yes. And so, you know, there's still life happens and there's all these mm -hmm. other things that come up. But I, I do think that that's a great strategy. Yeah, it helped me a lot, I think. Awesome. Well, I know we're, it's already been an hour. It goes so I know. <laughs> I, I hope that, uh, I mean, I think what you said, you, like you like I said, you're very insightful. And I think the oh, suggestions you. you were giving are very helpful. Good. I mean, there, there are things that we know psychologically are very beneficial. And I know it is an extra challenge when you're mm -hmm. um, having to do this all by yourself and yeah. it, it can be very lonely. And just sure. even that physical, like physically being alone and not being able to touch somebody is really yes. hard. Yeah. And so, you know, figuring out, you know, how it may not look the way we want it to be, right? It's not the ideal. Like we can have our preferred way, but sure. what are ways that we can still get a little bit of that that we need? Yeah. Um, so I'm, I think this will be really helpful for people and I hope, so. um, yeah. you know, I hope people had some good takeaways and yeah. we would still love to hear your questions, but yes. thank you so much, Diane, for yeah, joining You're us. welcome, Amber. Thank you for inviting me. Hi, Holly. People are popping on now. I'm like, oh, oh good. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Definitely check it out. It was yeah. it was a lot of good information. And yeah. um yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.